Hey, welcome to the Jet Fuel Only channel. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to paint your calipers. This isn't how to paint your calipers the right way or the easy way. It's just how I think it should be done. I'm gonna be showing you how to do it off the car. Up next. Now there's a lot of videos on YouTube on how to paint your calipers, but most of them show you how to paint calipers on your car. And I know that sounds easy, but to me, that does not sound like the best way to do it or the most complete way. So today I'm gonna to show you how to paint them off the car. Now as usual, my video is a little long and that's because I try to pack in all the details as possible so that you can feel confident that you can do the procedure. But if that's too much for you or you just wanna to skip to a certain section, that's fine. Go to any of these times here. I've also got clickable links in the description for you to hop directly to that part of the video. But I really appreciate if you watch the whole thing. It helps me and it will help you because you'll get the whole picture of the procedure. So why do you wanna paint your calipers anyway? Well, let me see here. Porsche, Ferrari, Corvette. Yeah, I mean, what screams sporty like bright red calipers on a car, right? Or maybe yellow, whatever you like. Okay, maybe you don't want sporty, but maybe your stock calipers are looking kind of dingy and you wanna give them a refresh. Or maybe you're like me and you've got a custom logo you wanna put on your caliper, but there's other logos already on the caliper, so you need to get rid of that, right? Well, painting is gonna be the way to go. Now there's definitely one of the best ways to color your calipers and that is powder coating. I mean, it's super durable finish, you can get any color you want and the finish is really nice, but it comes with a downside. Number one, it's super expensive, like four to $600 usually for a full set of calipers and you have to take it to a shop and they're gonna have it for a few days or you gotta ship it out, it might be gone for a week or two Plus all those shipping expenses, those calipers are heavy. So your car is gonna be down for a little while and that doesn't work for me because this is my daily driver. So I need my car going. The other downside is that you should be taking out the pistons and piston seals from the calipers. And disassembling the calipers in that way may not be something you know how to do or feel comfortable doing. And that's something else you'll have to like take it to a shop and pay somebody to do that for you. And a lot of times the powder coders don't wanna do it because well, their job is powder coating. Now I really wanted to do powder coating, but I think I finally talked myself out of it due to all that's required and the costs. So you could go super cheap and that is by spray paint. Yeah, there's caliper paint that's high temp paint and you can spray paint your calipers a bunch of different colors and it is pretty easy, but I've done that. About 10 years ago or more, maybe 20 now, geez, I painted some calipers and after a couple years, they were all chipped up and they just didn't look nice. And I just told myself, I'm not doing that again. I'm gonna powder coat. All right, so here I am not powder coating again. You know what else I did? On this car, about three years ago, I did Plasti-Dip. Did you know you could Plasti-Dip calipers? You can, it's good for about 400 degrees, which is fine for pretty much all street driving. And you know, it looks pretty good. It's totally removable, so you don't have to commit, but Plasti-Dip does start to peel. Like if you chip it, it peels and it keeps peeling and that's kind of a pain. But if you take care of it, it'll last a long time and mine lasted three years but it does look like plastic. It's plastic dip, right? Even with Glossifier, it never has that gloss that powder coated or painted calipers have. Now the next best thing to powder coating is what we're gonna do in this video, and that is using the G2 caliper paint system. It's an epoxy type paint that you brush on, so it can be done on the car or off the car. The finish is very resilient once it fully cures. It's super glossy. It's a self-leveling paint, so generally your brush strokes should level out unless you don't do so well like I did, but uh, it still looks really nice and it's durable and chemical resistant. And it's way cheaper than powder coating. It's only $55 for their basic colors or you can get any custom color you want for $110. Now you're probably wondering, Daniel, why are you taking the calipers off? Well, number one, I felt like it was probably the better thing to do to do a more complete job, right? You can really do the details and stuff. Number two, no matter what, this is a long, tedious process. You gotta really, really clean the calipers and then there's the painting process and that can take a while. And you know what? I don't wanna be doing that sitting on my garage floor with my head under the wheel well doing it in low light. Just doesn't sound fun. It already wasn't that much fun doing it out of the car. So the other thing is that darn Plasti Dip. Plasti Dip peels off really well if you put enough coats on. And I did, except the back where it was hard to spray and that became a nightmare as you'll see. So that's another reason to take off the calipers. And the last reason is the CTS here has beautiful Brembo calipers up front, but in the back, they put these crappy cast iron calipers. They're all like dimpled finished and they've got like casting marks and it just doesn't look nice. Plus 
the surface is so rough, I can't even put a decal on it. So I'm gonna take them off, polish them down a bit so that they'll look nicer once I paint them, and then I can put my decals on. Now, the other option is you can get the four piston Brembo set up from an ATSV or a Camaro SS 2016 and up, and that fits right on the CTS. There are some details, so join the Facebook groups if you wanna learn more about that. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to remove your calipers, remove the brake lines, how to keep all your brake fluid from running out of your car, which you really don't want to happen. We're gonna remove all my plastic crap off. We're gonna do an extensive cleaning. We're gonna show you the paint process, uh, then put on custom decals, and then reinstall the calipers. All the details are in this video, so let's get to it. For this installation, you'll need the following tools. Not only will you need these, but you'll also need all the tools necessary to do a standard brake job on your car. If you don't know how to do that on the CTS, I've covered it in my other videos for both the front and rear brakes. Be sure to check out those videos, link at the top right of your screen. Now, because you're removing the calipers, you will lose some brake fluid, so you'll need some extra brake fluid around. Be sure to know what type of brake fluid your car takes. You'll also need plenty of bottles of brake cleaner. You get one in the G2 caliper painting system, but you're gonna need at least two or three, depending on how dirty your brakes are. You'll need lots of paper towels. I went through probably three to five rolls in this process and lots of rubber gloves. Have a whole box ready. You'll also need a ratchet, of course. Uh, for my car, I used an 11 millimeter to remove the banjo bolt from the brake line. Yours may be different. Since your brake lines will just be dripping brake fluid and you have a limited amount in the system, you'll want some of these vacuum caps. I used Dorman 47393 vacuum caps. You'll need at least eight. These caps fit perfectly for my banjo nut and the back of my calipers. These should be fine for any car, but there are a number of vacuum cap sizes out there, so you might also just pick up a bunch just in case. Another way you can cap them off is maybe with earplugs. However, I'm not sure how brake fluid will do with those soft earplugs. So if you'd like to try that, you can, but you better have a backup plan. I hung my calipers up with hooks like this that I made out of hangers. This is the best way to get to all sides of the calipers while you paint them. The G2 caliper painting kit comes with one brush, but you'll want many, so pick up some extras and don't get them that are too cheap. Also, you can consider getting like a two inch paintbrush from the paint department. It'll help things go a little faster. Generally, you don't reuse the copper crush washers on the banjo bolts, so you'll want to get some more of those. This is a variety pack, but you can buy specific washers at the auto parts store. All right, if you want to make your S hooks out of hangers, that's fine. You can also buy similar things at the auto parts store in the brake tools section. But I just took this old hanger, straightened it out, cut it to length. Uh, it was kind of flimsy, so I twisted up one end to double it up to make it a little bit stronger, and then just bent it all into an S hook. I found them to be pretty darn useful. Next, you'll want to detach your calipers from your car. You can also detach the brake line first, but both have to happen either way. Then I'm using an 11 millimeter socket to break loose the brake line bolt and get it completely out. As soon as you loosen the bolt, it'll start to drip. And here it is, it's got the crush washer still attached. Now, not all cars is it so hard to get this off, but on the Cadillac, boy, it was one of the worst parts of my day, I would say. I tried using a pick and that just wouldn't do it. And then talking to a GM mechanic, thanks Todd, uh, he suggested to use just some vice grips and if you can get a good bite on it, which is tough because it's all slimy from the brake fluid, but get a grip on it and uh, then back out the bolt with your socket wrench. I can't say I enjoyed doing this, that just kept slipping off, and finally I got a good grip on it. Now, I do look back at this video and I realize I might have been able to use a pick to slowly turn the copper washer and maybe start to get it to unscrew and then I could get a better grip. Uh, give it a shot yourself and let me know how it goes. Then literally five or six minutes after working on this one stupid thing, very frustrating, it finally came loose. Once that's out, the bolt is free. Let's take a look at the banjo bolt. Here's that terrible washer. It's sort of in a triangle shape for some reason. This isn't very typical, I think. And then there's another washer. 
And then on the bolt on the side, there's a hole. This again is so the fluid can flow from the banjo nut and then it flows through the bolt and then into your brake caliper. Here on the brake line is the banjo nut and the fluid flows right out that little hole into the banjo bolt. Now we're gonna take one of our vacuum caps and just stick it right into the banjo nut and it seals it up just fine, but it's gotta be the right size. After you're done with the fronts, move on to the back and do the same. Brake lines back there, once you uh, get that released, it's the same terrible process on the Cadillac with that darn copper washer. I got some better needle nose vice grips and they were a little better, but it still wasn't as easy as I thought it would be. Now cap off that dripping brake line. By the way, make sure you have some cardboard or some rags around to catch all that brake fluid and wipe up any that's spilled. It's not good on parts of your car, especially plastics. Then remove your caliper and caliper bracket and let's take a look at them here on the bench. I've used a vacuum cap to cap off the hole where the banjo bolt goes on the calipers. But before you do that, you might wanna squish out all the remaining fluid inside the caliper by pressing the pistons back in. All right, here's the front calipers. The one on the left is how it should look after the plastic dip is off. The one on the right, I still need to work on. This was definitely one of the things that slowed down my project. Thankfully, you probably won't have to deal with it. Plasti dip, as you may know, needs many, many coats to peel off like this. And on the front, I definitely got four to seven coats on there and it came off pretty easy. But towards the back, it was harder to get my spray can back there and this stuff got harder and harder to peel off. So eventually, I had to bust out the power tools. I used a Dremel with a wire brush to help get that remaining plasti dip off. It was tedious and my cat hardly watched me the whole time. A little bit of acetone or brake cleaner or mineral spirits helps soften the plastic dip if you have this problem. Next, you wanna clean up the calipers. You need to get all the dirt off so the paint will stick nicely. When you're using brake cleaner, by the way, wear safety goggles and note the direction of the nozzle. I've totally made the mistake before not wearing safety goggles and it hurt, so be careful. You'll know the calipers properly clean when the paper towel no longer picks up any dirt after you wipe it down. Next, I'll do the same with the rear brake parts. On the caliper bracket, if the brake pads haven't been removed, make sure you take those off. And then there's these uh, metal clips that are on there. You can take those off. If you've got new ones, that's great, especially if you use those later for masking. These rubber boots, you could remove these, uh, but I decided not to. I just mask them off later. I'll compress the piston on the caliper and be sure to drain it out. It's nice and flush now. Now the plastic dip on this caliper was even harder to remove because the caliper has a lot of texture. So I went at it again with the power tools. Lots of fun, believe me. At least some of it peeled off. Now one of the main reasons I wanted to pull the calipers off was so that I could clean up the metal on the rear calipers. There's these casting marks, you see? And this makes it very difficult for the decal to stick. So I wanted to smooth it out like this. The paint will also help smooth it out, in general, we need to make them look better. This was a cheap touch on Cadillac's part, I would say. Now there's lots of ways to make the metal look better, but uh, here's what I had in my arsenal. I put some sandpaper on my dual action polisher. I did some sanding. I used a grinding uh, stone on my air polisher, and I used a little bit of sanding from my Dremel. Whatever you can find to make this happen will get it done. I'm sure there's easier ways though, but this is just what I had. Do the same to the caliper bracket, get those casting marks off, smoothen it up. And once you've got it to a point of your liking, it's time to just clean it up. So same thing, spray it with the brake cleaner, scrub it as necessary, make sure it's nice and clean. The next step is masking. It's almost as important as the paint itself and will likely take longer than painting. It's important to pay attention to detail, but I admit even my patience was limited and it shows in my result. I wrap these little bolts, for example, and you don't have to, I mean, nobody will ever see them, but I just wanted to do that. I rolled up a piece of tape to stick into each of the holes where the caliper pins go because you don't want to clog up those holes. 
And then I also paid attention to the smooth machined parts of the calipers. I wanted to protect these from paint because I figured, well, they're machined smooth for a reason. There are certain contact points where they get mounted, for example, and I wanted to keep those that way. So I used some tape and a razor blade and tried to mask off the best I could. The last thing is, of course, cover up your brake pistons and the rubber seals and mask off anywhere where the brake pads will be touching. Again, there's a lot here that no one will ever see, so it's just important that you at least leave space to paint in all the areas people will see so they can admire your calipers. I did the same here and masked off these little mounting points. Then I moved on to the rear calipers and brackets and did the same. There are some areas I think I masked that maybe I didn't have to, so it's up to you. But definitely mask off the bleeder screw well. You could take it out, but you wanna make sure you also don't get paint in the bleeder screw hole. I masked off those rubber boots on the bracket and I'm just using these metal clips as a way of masking paint. I can clean these off later with uh, some brake cleaner or mineral spirits. Here's one caliper masked and the other one not masked. Now the part we're waiting for, and that is the painting. All right, get your G2 caliper paint can, open it up and pour the reactor in. Make sure you pour all of it in. It was measured out specifically for the amount of paint that's in there. Mix it up for about a minute and you can see it's a nice consistent color. Let it rest for five minutes, then come back and stir it up again. And now it's ready. Now you can start painting you'll need at least two coats for good coverage. But here's my big tip of the day. When using this stuff, paint all the areas that people will see first, do both coats. That's because after a couple hours, this stuff starts to get thick and brush marks don't level out as well. So if you paint all the areas that people see and then go to the back, the worst coating will be on the back where no one will see it. Now on the smoother front calipers, I was seeing paint separation like this, which tells me maybe they weren't clean enough, but I cleaned them really well. Maybe they did need to be scoured or something first, but G2 says you don't need to. The rear calipers painted just fine though. So here, as you can see, this is how I found out it was a mistake. I started with the backs of the calipers. So I did this probably just to figure out how the paint went. On the front, you can see it takes at least two or three coats to fully cover the original logo. And I'm using a bigger brush to make the process go faster. I'm using the small brushes to get into the crevices. For some reason, the paint doesn't want to get into those tight spots, so that was also tedious. After it sat for a little bit, I tried to remove as much masking as I could while the paint was still a little wet. This is the best thing to do, but if you can't get some stuff off without touching the paint, don't worry about it, it'll come off later. All right, now for the calipers. Uh, for the brackets, I'm using silver caliper spray paint. It's good to 900 degrees. I didn't get G2 because that would be another $50 for just these small bits. And I'm not really worried about if they chip or not. I can totally paint these easily anytime. For some reason, this spray can though, it gave me some trouble. It started dripping all over. I was like, what is going on? So look at it. It was just dripping paint. The nozzle had a crack in it. So. It was quite a messy paint job. And then I just hung them up to dry with the rest of my laundry. Isn't that what you do at home? I let the calipers dry for 24 hours before handling them. I looked closely at all the calipers and I definitely found some spots that I didn't notice while painting. But after three hours of painting, boy, you get tired of staring at them. The rest of the masking tape came off pretty easily actually. This area here, I probably could have painted. It would have been fine. There are some spots where the paint went over the masking. Uh, also, especially on these textured calipers, I noticed that it looks good on the front where I wanted it to, but near the back, there's some areas where the paint didn't quite get into all of the texture. That's okay, no one's gonna see it, right? Looking at the front calipers, I can't say that I was completely satisfied with my painting skills. The paint started to thicken and a lot of brush strokes are there. But even on stock painted calipers, they're not perfectly smooth, but they're definitely smoother than these. The backside doesn't look very good either, but again, no one's gonna see it back there, and I definitely didn't try as hard. Overall, not bad though, not as great as I'd like, but uh, I have to say that I'm sure no one's gonna notice. 
All right, there are some paint that got through the masking area, so with a razor blade, a Dremel, and some picks, I was able to scrape off most of that paint. Be sure to get the paint off of the bleeder screw if you got any on there. You could, of course, remove the bleeder screw and help get the rest of it off. This area is where the brake pads touch. However, where the red arrow's pointing, I probably could have painted. Now, to attach my custom decals. These are custom V-Sport logo decals from VIP Vinyl Works. Always wipe down the surface first with isopropyl alcohol. And now I'm measuring to find the exact center of the decal so that I can put it on correctly. The way the logo's designed, it can mislead you onto where the center is. Now just peel back the backing, but do it slowly. Don't do it fast. Sometimes the decal will stick to the backing. If it does, just press it back down and then try pulling it off again. Once you get that off, you can lay it down on the ends with the clear tape and not press on the decal and you should be able to re-lift it and try it again. So here I wasn't quite happy so I peeled it back. Be careful, those details of a decal will tend to stick. I found a good spot where the slash of the V sort of matches a angled portion at the center of the caliper there. I really liked it in this position. Then press it down firmly with your fingers, maybe use a credit card or a squeegee like this to really give it a good press down. Then peel back that clear layer. Do it carefully though, it can also lift parts of the decal off, especially those little details like those little slashes. Ah, oh, that's satisfying. All right, now it's on there. Let's go ahead and do that to the other calipers as well. On the rear caliper, it's the same process, and this is why I ground down those casting marks. It's a very small area, and those little bits of the decal just won't stick to a porous surface. Here, it was starting to lift, so I pressed it down again and then re-peeled. Everything came off real nice there. Now, it was a little cold in my garage on this day, so I'm hitting it up with a little bit of a heat gun. Vinyl does like a little heat to adhere better. Just be careful, don't melt your paint or your decals. All right, time to install our new brakes. Get your banjo bolt, have one washer already on there and have the other one ready. The other one goes between the banjo nut and the caliper itself. So take out that vacuum cap, it's gonna start dripping. Push the bolt through, put on your washer and screw it into the caliper. After you've tightened down the brake line bolt, make sure your entire brakes are fully installed properly and torqued down and move to the rear. Same thing, I've got the caliper mounted, it's just easier to handle. I'll pull out the vacuum cap from the caliper, remove the vacuum cap from the brake line. This one didn't come out so easy, so I had to use some pliers. Get your washers together on your banjo bolt and install the banjo bolt into the caliper. Now once your brakes are fully installed, make sure you properly top off your brake fluid and properly bleed the brakes. Be sure to check out my other video where I show you how to bleed your brakes. All right, we've painted our brake calipers and I have to say they look pretty good. Not as perfect as I thought they would be, but once they're on the car, man, that gloss is amazing. So much better than Plasti Dip. Now remember to set aside like a couple of days for this job, at least a day and a half, because after you've painted them, you can't handle them for like 24 hours. And I know G2 says, oh, you can put your wheels back on after four and just don't drive for 24 hours. Well, that's if you're doing it on the car you're not having to touch the calipers. So don't touch them for 24 hours. 
put your decals on after 24 hours and handle them carefully because they're not fully cured after that time. I think it said it takes, what, a week or two to fully, fully cure. And in that time, like I found that brake fluid can still mar the finish. So don't get brake fluid on it. If you do, wipe it off immediately. And then once you get your calipers reinstalled and the uh, brake line on, uh, be sure to follow up with your brake system. Make sure that there's no drips from there. Reach back there, touch that banjo bolt, make sure you don't have any brake fluid coming out. Not a good thing. Also, if you wanna keep those beautiful calipers looking nice and clean, you may consider ceramic coating them and you can do that yourself. Just buy CarPro's uh, ceramic coating called uh, C-Quartz and you can totally do it yourself. It's not very hard. Also, be careful with your calipers. You've just spent a lot of time on them and taking your wheels off, your rims can hit that caliper and chip it and you won't be happy. Also, tell your mechanics, hey, I spent a lot of time on those, take care of my calipers, right? So now if you think after watching this video, you can knock out this job yourself, please hit that like button and I always appreciate your subscriptions. Hit the bell to be notified of my next videos and you know there's more coming. Thanks so much for watching the Jet Fuel Only channel. See you next time.